Hello, everybody. Hi, LaTanya. Hi, Maya. Hi, Essie. Hi, Cicely. It's going to be good tonight, ladies. Why we still got an open. Hi, Quan. Why we still have an open room. Hi, Derek. While we still have an open room, go ahead and invite somebody on. I'm going to allow that tonight. Hi, Tracy. <clears throat> Hi, son. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Jasmine. We only have a couple of more weeks. Brandon, a couple of more weeks. Hi, Sarah, of the open uh, room. Hi, Minister Kathy. How are you? Thank you, Cicely. Thank you, Jazz. I am, um, I'm elated. We only have a couple of more. Hi, uh, Annie. More weeks of the open room. So I want to share um, the deep of what you know. He's been talking to me about. I've been in the presence all day. I've been in the presence all week, really, after Sunday's elevation. Hi, Michelle. Okay. And I can truly say it's a difference um, after Sunday, but we're not going to talk about that tonight, all right? We're not going to talk about that tonight. I want to go right in. Hi, Cree. I want to go right in. <clears throat> I was talking, of course, to one of the daughters, but I had already begun to think about it because this spirit of jealousy came back up. And it wasn't for me, nothing about me. But I remember when I taught on the spirit of jealousy and the Holy Spirit said something that was key. The spirit of jealousy is one of the hardest spirits to be delivered of. Hi, Haven. Hi, Jeff. And it's hard because, hi, Pastor Carol. Everybody say hi to new the new pastor of Across All Boundaries, Columbia campus, Pastor Carol Watered. Hi, Natanya. It's one of, hi, Dion, the hardest spirits. Hi, Pocky. To be delivered of because it says something about the person that they really do, do not want to face. Um, years ago, I had a mentor to tell me about the spirit of jealousy. She began to uh, break it down for me. She said, when people tell you, you think you're something, you know, she said, no, you tell them, no, you think that I'm something because you're the one with the issue. You have to realize jealousy is not about the one who is uh, receiving the jealousy. Jealousy is about the one who is caught in it. When someone says, you just think you all are that and, and, and you're high-minded and whatever. Hi, Chris. No, it's not you that think it. Hi, Danielle. It's they that think it because they're the ones who are expressing it. Get your cups tonight. It's going to be deep tonight. Get you a drink. I have ginger tea tonight. <clears throat> so, hi, Denise. I begin to think about this again, because it's come up again, I'm, I'm mentoring a young lady who's really, really struggling in her church with a spirit of jealousy that's really trying to sabotage her, uh, her name, her reputation. So 
I, I pulled out some things and then God began to talk to me about tags, labels, and garments. And it's amazing because for the elevation service, really both speakers were talking about uh, Joseph's coat. They took different um, turns in it. Hi, Cedric. But both of them were really ta talking about the same thing. The coat that Joseph wore that his brothers really were jealous of. It was amazing because Prophetess Valerie uh, Burris came Saturday night and she talked about, it's about your coat. And then mother came uh, Sunday at the elevation at five and she talked about the codes of God, the colors and the codes of God and the same scriptures that uh, Prophetess had used Saturday night Mother used it Sunday, same chapter, same scriptures down to even skipping the same ones to hit the same ones. Well, anyway, I begin to look at this spirit again. And again, the Holy Spirit said, it is one of the hardest spirits for people to get deliverance from because it's saying that they believe that someone else can replace them. Hi, Rose. Uh-oh. Jealousy really is. You feel as though you can be replaced. Somebody does it better than you. Somebody is desired more than you. Hi, Margaret. You feel replaceable. That's really jealousy. I want that to sink in. Hi, Apostle. Jealousy is you feel as though you can be replaced. And it's hard to be delivered of because that is saying something about me. If I think that someone can take my place and replace me, that means I think little of myself. And that's one of the hardest things for us to admit. And so many people never get delivered. Yes, you can, Cicely. Never get delivered of a spirit of jealousy. They never get delivered. William Penn, William Penn said, the jealous are troublesome to others. Hi, Stephanie but a torture to themselves. I'm, I'm going to let that sink in. The jealous are troublesome to others, but they're a torture to themselves. Feeling replaceable is jealousy. Jealousy is no more than I think you can take my place. I think that I am replaceable. And I, I posted today, if you feel that way, you will be replaced. Hi, Holly. Hi, Robert. Jealousy is you think that you're replaceable. So let's be honest. Most of us, if not currently jealous in some area of life, have at one time been jealous. And this is where you get all of the competition and the backbiting and, and, and the, the sabotage and the, the hate. It's really not about people wanting to harm or uh, hating for hate's sake, it's because I think you're going to take my place. Therefore, I'm not going to be valuable. I'm not going to have any worth or I'm going to be cast aside. That's jealousy. 
And when you feel like that, of course, the enemy sends forth a spirit to encourage your feeling like that. Okay. The enemy will send a spirit because jealousy is not always, a, doesn't always start as a spirit. Sometimes it starts out of childhood hurt or where people have played favorites or, you know, you, you, you were looked over or not picked. So we feel like we feel. My feelings are my feelings. Right or wrong is how I feel. The worst thing you could possibly do is be in denial of your feelings. God gave you feelings for a reason. Hi, Jovi. He gave you feelings for a reason. It's your alert system. At any moment, your feelings will tell you your location. It's your radar. Your feelings will let you know when you're hurt. Your feelings will let you know when something gives you pleasure. Your feelings will let you know when you're afraid. It's a radar. Hi, Lynette. So your feelings are your feelings right or wrong. They're how you're feeling. But when you feel as though someone is trying to muscle in on you or someone is trying to take your place, then if you don't quickly get out of your feelings and deal with what the feelings are trying to tell you, then the enemy will send a spirit to strengthen that in you and then it becomes torturous. Hi, Sharon. Hi, LaTanya. It becomes torturous to you. And now it's not just that you feel as though you can be replaced or this person is going to displace you or you're going to be thrown away or you're not going to be wanted anymore. Now you begin to, to hi, Keisha, allow other, other emotions and feelings to come along. Spring, hate, envy, scrife, covetedness, and eventually murder. Uh-oh, I'll look this way. Y'all got your drinks tonight? Because when you don't deal what what's dealing with you, more things will deal with you. When you don't deal, I'm going to slow it down, with what is dealing with you, then more things will begin to deal with you. So when you feel that tinge of, mm, I don't like you. We're too religious sometimes. I'm talking to the church. Amen. My spirit don't agree. No. It's not your spirit. It's that person has threatened you, mayhaps, and you feel as though they can take your place. Jealousy is, I think that you can replace me. Hi, Andretta. And so... What you have to realize, and I had to get here, when jealousy shows up in a person towards you, it's about that person. It has nothing to do with you. And it's really nothing you can do about it. Because the more you try to make the person feel comfortable, you allow the spirit to nest. The more you try to assure them, you fortify the walls of their insecurities. When jealousy is against you, 
it is it has absolutely nothing to do with you it has everything to do with the person who feels replaceable and this is hard to say and probably 90% of the time you can't help them someone else will have to help them uh oh i'm going i'm going to drink the tea hi they go my niece hi cornisha It has nothing to do with the person it's directed towards. It has everything to do with the person who's dealing with the insecurity of feeling as though they're replaceable. Oh my goodness. And again, it's hard to be delivered of because for me to say, I feel you can take my place. I'm replaceable. That's saying something about me that I don't want to say. And most people never get delivered of jealousy. I don't care how you try to snuggle up to them. I don't care how you try to reassure them. I don't care how you... You, you decrease. I don't care what you change. I don't care how you love on them. You can even back out and allow them to completely possess what they thought you came to replace and they'll still be jealous. Because again, it was about an, it, it is about an insecurity in them and has absolutely nothing, hi Henrietta, to do with you. Providence Valerie said something Saturday night that just tickled me pink. She said, she was talking about the haters and she said, and for those of you who say, I'm tired of hearing about the haters, well, you need to leave church because that's, the DNA pretty much of the church. We're hated. Christ was hated. The disciples was hated. They killed them. So haters is a part of what you have to endure if you are part of the kingdom of God. And again, it's nothing you can do about a jealousy spirit that's directed towards you because it's not about you. But you must deal with the jealousy spirit when it's you that the spirit is operating through. Because if you don't deal with it, jealousy is never satisfied because if I feel as though you can replace me, I'll do everything to not be displaced. Because I feel you can replace, I'll do whatever is necessary not to be displaced. And that turns into totally different beasts. Covetedness, anger, rage, division, strife, murder. Because murder is not just Physical murder is you can kill people's reputation with your mouth. You can kill their influence with lies. So we have to deal with that. I wanted to deal with that first because that's what brought about my topic for tonight. Tags and attachments. You have to be careful as you gather for your next place, as you gather people, as you build teams, as you, you, you begin to look who to bring on board, who to, who to reach out to, you have to be careful because some people you think are attached are just a tag. And some people who need to be a tag, you have attached. There's a difference. 
Y'all gonna talk to me tonight. Hi, Judith. And you need to know the difference. Their operation and their purpose is completely different in your life. Now, for those of you who are just visiting the Situation Room, you know, you might not have been here before, or you know, this is where I mentor and uh, I mentor people, most women, and we talk about how do I get to my next place? How, how do I start my business? How do I start the ministry? How do I go back to school? What is it I need to do? So we talk about strategies. That's why it's called the Situation Room. It's strategies. And it's not for people who want to sit on the porch and constantly cry over spilled milk or don't want to get up and run and want to complete play in the blame game. Honey, some of us been playing that blame game for 25 years. We need to, I mean, that dog don't even hunt no more. So, that's what the situation room is. We talk about the strategies. How do I move from point A to point B? Because eventually, uh, this is my goal. This is where I want to go. So tell me how to get there. And so we, we deal with those things that are a detriment to the advancing. Hello, April. Of the people in the situation room. And so tonight he told me, uh, you know, I always seek God. I always seek God. Uh, what to bring to the room. And so tag-alongs are good. But tag-alongs are not attached. And so what he just said to us is, some people you feel are attached to you are just tag-alongs. And some people who should be tag-alongs, you have attached. There's a difference. And he took it to a garment because I've been dealing with garments all week in my elevation, the coat of many colors, um, the story of Joseph. And he began to show me and talk to me, tags have purpose. A garment has a tag for a reason. A garment has multiple tags and labels. The tag will tell you who the maker is. The tag will tell you the content. The tag will tell you how to take care of it. And the tag will even warn you. That's the tag. But what do you do with the tag? You cut it off. Hi, Overseer. You cut the tag off. You put it away or you throw it away. If the tag is a permanent tag on the inside of the garment, it's not seen. You refer back to it, but after you've read it so many times, you don't even need to read it anymore. So what does the tag do? The tag heralds. The product. Uh-oh. I'm going to let that one sink in. The tag knows to herald. The tag announces. The tag gives information. That's the purpose of the tag. One of the stupidest things now, this is just me. One of the stupidest fads and styles I ever have seen in my life was when people would keep the tags and the labels on stuff and wear it inside out. I, I never understood that. It was foolishness to me. I'll take a drink. I mean, that was to me. You, know, you all know that Sergio is my son. And he often talks about, well, used to often talk about P. 
people who had to have a label. Ooh. Oh my. Hi, AJ. Have to have a label. You want everybody to know you're wearing Gucci. So you buy the Gucci belt that says Gucci. You want everybody to know you have Michael Kors. So you buy the bag that has the big MK on the front. Ooh, come on here, April. You want everybody in our day, in my children's day, you want everybody to know you had on the duck head so you made sure duck head was. And he hates emblems that are signatures. Oh, God, here we go. Here we go. I, I, I hear it now. He said, Mama, a quality garment or quality bag, because of what it's made of, nobody has to read the label. You already know it's quality. I'm going. And the worth is not found in the name. The worth is found in the making and the construction of the garment. Y'all gonna talk to me tonight? So one of the craziest fads, I, to this day, I don't understand why people leave their labels on their clothes. Why? Men with suits and, you know, the tag. Take it off. Really, the tag supplies the consumer with much needed information. Uh-oh. Oh, Lord. Oh, 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 Lord. Oh, Lord. So a tag, not so they can take it back after they use it. <laughs> yes, some people do do that. <gasps> so a tag tells you who the maker is, tells you what the content is, tells you how to take care of it, and gives you any warnings that need to be had. You know, like fire with felon or whatever. But listen at this. Tags don't really have integrity. The integrity is found in the garment when you wear it and not in the hype of the tag. I am teaching better than y'all responding to me tonight. We get so hyped about tags. Ooh, but you really are not going to know the integrity of the garment until you wear it. The integrity is in the product and not in the tag. But the tag or herald about the garment. So you need tag-alongs in your life. You need tag-alongs. You need somebody to herald you. Talk about what you made of. Talk about how, you know, how you need to be cared for. You need people to say and give a warning about you. So don't despise the tagalongs. But recognize they just tagging along. They're disposable. Uh-oh, they ain't going to like me tonight. They're disposable. They are not the garment. Listen at this. If they love and are believing you, everybody has some use. We dismiss people because we see no use. But if they love you and they believe in you, they got some use even if they just a tag. They the fan club. They'll herald your coming. They'll tell people what you made of. 
They'll point people in your direction. Hi, Carla. Hi, Danielle. So don't despise the tag alongs. If they love you and believe in you, stop dismissing people because you see them as small. Because they don't have no money to support your vision and your ministry. Because they're not eloquent of tongue. Or you consider them to be country and you want to go city-fied. Don't you despise that tag alone? They know who they are. They're like, look, I don't want to be worn. I just want to be taken, up, taken along with you. Just let me tell everybody. I want to tell them what your name is. I want to tell them what you made of. I want to warn them what they bet not try to do to you. Your tag alongs a fight for you. I know I keep referring, but I always want to give people credit. That's what's wrong with a lot, a lot of us on these lies. We're using other people's stuff. I'm just on a little rant now. We're using other people's stuff we didn't listen to, and then we don't give credit to the people who told it, acting like you thought of that. You didn't think of that. You got that from somebody else. Well, anyway, Val said something else. You got to know where to take the people in your life. It's not their fault. You put them in wrong positions in your life. Then you get mad. You got to know who you can take to the boardroom because they can't go to the boardroom. Don't mean you can't shop with them. You better know who to take to the fight. Okay. All right. So don't despise the tag alongs. Just know they're tagging along. Just to know they're disposable. And sometimes they have an expiration date. They can't go all the way with you. But if they love you and are believe in you, everybody has some use. But if they are jealous of you or hate you, no matter how much they can help you, they will eventually maim destroy or kill you. I'm, I'm going to go right back here. Know who to tag. Know who to attach. Know who to pin on as a tag and know who to weave into the garment. It does not matter. Listen to me. It does not matter how intelligent, how resourceful, how, mu how much wealth and money somebody got, how much know-how they got. It doesn't matter if they've been there a million times in one and you're trying to get there your first time. If they are jealous of you or hate you, they will eventually maim, destroy, or kill you. Remember, jealousy is I think you're going to take my place. It leads to hatred. It leads to envy. It leads to covetedness. And what you covet, you will be willing to kill for. Uh-oh. Do we hear that? We have allowed people to be attached to us because they have money. We've allowed people to be attached to us because they have resources. We've allowed people to be attached to us because they knew the way. Hi, Pastor Tracy. We've allowed people to be attached to us because they promise us something or they seem to be our flunkies. But if they are jealous of you or hate you, eventually they're going to maim you, destroy you, and or kill you. Tag alongs. William Penn said, I'm going to say it again. 
The jealous are troublesome to others, but a torture to themselves. Hi, Pastor uh, Hooper. Hi, son, Matthew. Because it's never about the person they're jealous of. It's always about them. They see you as a replacement, even though they can't admit it to themselves. We have a, allowed people we know are jealous. We know covet. We know don't care for us. We've not let them be tags. They shouldn't even be tags. But we've allowed them to attach to us. And then we wonder why the garment is wearing out. You got a parasite like a worm, a silkworm eating away at the fibers of your garment. Hi, Pastor Keith. Mm. And then I heard this. This is going to help y'all pastors. Listen. How do you know who to allow to be a tag? Who to allow to be attached in a part of your garment. You have to know your own integrity level. You have to know your own foundation. You have to know what you are made of. And then the Holy Spirit said this to me just before I got on. If it's not woven into your undergarments, don't weave it into your outer garments. See, y'all ain't ready. If it's not a part of your foundation, don't put it on. There's a scripture in the Bible, and I should have looked it up, but it just came to me. In Old Testament, where God tells them not to mingle fibers. If I'm not mistaken, it's wool and probably linen. Don't weave them together. That's what God says. It's a mingled seed. So he said to me today, just before I got on for the situation room, he said, if it's not woven into your foundation, Sheldon, don't you weave it into what you're wearing. So if it's not a part of your, if, of your foundation of what you believe, if, it's, if, if, if you believe in integrity and the person has none, why would you allow them to attach to you? Money, resources, know-how. They might can be a tag, but they definitely don't need to be a part of the garment. If it's not woven into the undergarment, because that's your foundation, don't you weave it into the outer garment. I don't know, you know, we got some men on here tonight, but grandmama always used to say, don't you never leave home with tear up are dirty underwear. Always have clean and presentable underwear. Because you don't ever know what's going to happen. And you'll be exposed in your foundation. Uh-oh. Mm -mm. You don't ever know. You don't ever know. Hi, Tracy. Don't ever leave home with no foundation. I don't understand this new crave where these women go in commando. I just can't. I can't do it. It's got to be a barrier between you. Come on here, Holy Ghost. And everything else that's trying to attach to you. God is the undergarment. We know that he's the coat, but he's also the undergarment. If it's not in God, if you're a Christian, if it's not in God, then you don't need to weave it and wear it at all. If it's not a part, if it's not woven into the undergarments, why would you weave it and wear it on top of the, uh, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. Now, attached the garment. 
not the tags. We've talked about the tags, the people who are going to herald you, the people who are going to tell people what you made of, the people who are going to tell people, uh, warn people. Tags do all of that. Tags tell the maker. Tags tell you the content. Tags tell you the care instruction. Tag, tags tell you warnings. This is not fire repellent, so you don't need to get in there. No flames with this, all right? But the garment itself, the tags herald the garment, but the fibers are attached to the garment. They would make up, they're woven together and they make the garment. So you don't need to let people attach to you and be a part of the garment that can't strengthen you. You got to know who strengthens you. You got to know who adds value to you. You got to know who adds worth to you. And you got to know who depreciates you as well as who weakens you. We are too high, Pastor Presley. We are too quick. People talk a good game. They do. And all the time, they don't, they're not, a lot of times people believe what they say. They do. They meant it when they said they were going to support you forever in a day. They meant it when they said it. They meant that they were going to stick closer than a brother. When they said it. But it takes time for you to figure out whether they're the tag or their piece of the woven garment. Take your time. I believe I've said it on here before, but y'all know my grandmama raised me. I'm sorry if I feel like I sound like I'm old, but she said, baby, don't stir in muddy water. Leave it alone. Mud is heavy. It's going to settle at the bottom. And then you'll be able to see exactly what it is. Especially leaders in the church. Let, let, me, let me, I guess it just turned into a church thing tonight. But I think the women are all right with that because most of us, if not all of us, are saved. We're so quick to give appointments. We're so quick to want to use people. Um, and allow them to express their gifts and, you know, put them to work. But I'm getting in that place. You need to watch. Wait till the mud settles. Grandma, you say it all the time. Don't, don't stir in mess. Don't, you don't need to stir in muddy water. Leave it alone. Because as long as you stir in it, you can't see clearly. Just leave it alone. Let it settle down. Mud is heavy. It'll settle to the bottom and then you'll be able to see clearly what it truly looks like. So it is with your life. Your, your destiny is too critical, valuable for you to allow jealousy, envy, strife, hatred, murder, to attach to you and take it out. You don't have to apologize to nobody. Mm. See, I'm, I'm going into that mode. There is no need to apologize to nobody because you don't want to wear them like a tag and you don't want to weave them into your garment. You don't have to make apologies for protecting the destiny, the call, the appointment, the assignment on your life. Take a drink. Leaders, we are too quick. We want everybody to feel good. And I'm not saying that because I do. We want everybody to feel wanted. We want everybody to feel like they have a place. And everybody does have a place. We just have mistakenly not taken the time to let them show us and tell us where their place is 
Because a lot of times where they think their place is, is not where they, their place is. A Hebretic child is not named until about the eighth, eight to 12 days. You know why? Because the parent is waiting for the personality of the child to tell them what the child needs to be called. Is no, You can want to call it whatever you want to call it, but if it's not that, it's not going to answer to you. You wear the garment. You have to be careful of what you allow to attach to you. To attach to your ministry. To attach to your vision. To attach to the call. To attach to your anointing. You don't want to put a weak synthetic fiber in a completely silk garment. You know what happens? Silk is strong. People think that silk is fragile and delicate. No, silk is a very strong thread. But it has to remain 100% silk. When you add synthetic and man-made fibers to it, it weakens the bond of the silk. It doesn't weaken the silk. It weakens the bond. Oh my God. So when you allow people to attach to you who are synthetic, it's not the people who are already there who are authentic and natural and pure, it doesn't weaken them. It weakens the bond among them. Keep teaching up in here tonight. So confusion breaks out in the camp. You had a team that worked wonderfully together. They were on one accord. Everybody saw the same way. Everybody moved the same way. Everybody uh, thought the same way. But then you had a tag over here who was telling everybody about the silk. How strong the silk was. How beautiful the silk was. How pure the silk was. The tag was heralding about the silk. So... You allow the heralding of the tag to convince you that its synthetic man-made polyester could now be a part of the garment. And so you allowed it to, now it's caused the vision in the bond of the silk. Your people are not weak. I don't know who he talking to. He talking to somebody on here tonight and you might testify before it's over with and it's almost over with. Your people are not weak. Your people are not rebellious. Your people haven't lost their passion. They haven't lost their strength or their anointing. You mix something in that has loosened the bond among them. A house divided against itself can never stand. Keep the contact pure. Hi, Vic. Keep your contacts pure. Know who are the tags. Know who needs to be attached. And know what to weave. If you are an integritous person, why would you bring someone who has not an inkling of integrity on the team? Why would you do that? It's all right, baby. Come on on. It's fine. 
So that's what he's been giving me. And those of you, hello, my brother, William. It's good to see you. Everybody say hello to uh, Pastor William Brown. Hi, Phyllis. You have to know what part people play in your life. If they love and believe in you, they have a use. Stop throwing people away because their speech is not what you think it ought to be. They didn't go to Ivory League schools or they didn't graduate college or, you know, they too country bunking for you. They're, they're not eloquent of tongue. They don't have a high power job. Uh-oh. If, if somebody believes in you, because at the end of the day, let me tell you something. No matter how much money you have, how much education you have, how prolific you are, how intelligent and smart you are. When you lose your mind or lose it all. It's the people who believe in you and love you that going to stay with you. The others just using you. Networking is good in its place. I promise you that. It's good to network. Especially if you have a business, network. But don't you ever be fooled by the network. That's what they're doing. Casting a net to make it work. Networking is wonderful in its right place. But the people you're networking with are not the ones who are going to be there when you lose it all. They, they're not going to be the ones... Who will clean your behind when you can't clean your own. We're going to be real tonight. They're not the ones who are going to put food in your cupboards when you go bankrupt. It's the little country bunking down the street. You didn't invite to the party because you didn't want all your high power friends to know. They live down the street. It's the neighbor who don't have no teeth and can't read real well. Who cuts your grass when you out of town. Jet setting it all over the world. With them people you networking with. Those are the ones. So everyone has. If they love you and believe in you. You keep those people close. On the other hand. If they are jealous of you or hate you. It does not matter. How much they can help you. Eventually. They will maim you, destroy you, and kill you. That, that's good right there. I'll never forget, Father told me two years ago, I'm going to teach you you all like to eat with friends, but I'm going to teach you how to dine with your enemies. I'm going to drink my ginger tea. You got to learn how to dine with your enemies and realize your enemies would have you for dinner. Don't you ever turn your, don't you ever think because someone has money, position, know-how, power, authority, that they can be attached to you. It takes more than that. It takes more than that. Go back to the silk. Silk is strong. It looks fragile. It's a beaut when you got a hundred percent silk garment. It's beautiful. It looks delicate, but silk is one of the strongest threads. 
when it's 100% silk, it has strength. What weakens it is when we put synthetic man-made fibers in with it and it doesn't weaken the silk it weakens the bond amongst the silk so you wondering what's wrong with your team it's nothing wrong with the team members it's that you've added a synthetic to the purity of the garment so the bond is broken. Your people are fine. They're still anointed. They're still strong. They're still dedicated. They're still intelligent. But they were working together at one time. You added something that caused them to do this. It has no communion with the silk. So all it can bring is division. And when you loosen the silk, it has to stand alone. The threads are no longer. This is, I said it earlier. I wish I had looked it up before because I didn't. God said, don't mingle threads. You, you don't weave different fibers together. The strength of us is in the lightness of us. What fellowship has light with darkness? I'm going, look, it's too many preachers on here tonight. You can't mingle seeds, not even in a field. As long as you're planting corn, baby, it's going to grow. As long as you got squash, it's going to grow. Mess around and mingle that seed. One has a longer root system. One is more aggressive. Somebody going to get choked out. And so much fighting goes on sometimes under the ground that nothing comes on top of the ground. Ask me how I know. I'm married to a farmer's son. You don't mingle seeds and you don't mingle fibers because the strength of it is in its lightness. You don't crossbreed animals. That's where you get your um, mule from. I'm going to take another drink. Okay, I'm going to take another drink. I'm about finished, Pastor. I preached a sermon one time. The mule in me. A mule is a mix of a donkey and a horse. That's where you get your mule from. The donkey is a pure, purebred. The horse is a purebred. But somehow they got together and mingled the seed. Now we got a mule. And the mule wake, wakes up every day and tries to make a decision. Is it going to be a horse today or is it going to be a jackass today? Well, what's the difference? Contrary to what people believe, donkeys are very intelligent. And a donkey is not going to let you kill it. Meaning it ain't going to plow in the hot sun. <laughs> thirsty. And ravished. It's going to stop. It's stubborn. Because it's highly intelligent. It's not just going to allow you to kill it. But a horse is one of those animals that Yah has made to be dedicated to men when a horse is knitted to a man he will run until his heart explodes in his chest if that's what master wants he will give his life 
to please his master. But them seeds mingled, okay? So a mule is part horse, part donkey. It's got the intelligence of the donkey, but it has the dedication and the commitment of the horse. And so every morning they wake up and try to decide which way is it going to go. So you don't ever know what you're going to get with a mule. You've weakened the intelligence of the donkey and you've weakened the commitment of the horse. So now it's just confused. Some of us got mules. They confused because we mingled. You dealing with a mule? Which way the wind blowing today? Strong animals. My father-in-law preferred to plow with his mule. Her name was Molly. And you would hear him out there with Molly. I tell this story at my church all the time. He hollering with Molly. Hey, Molly. Molly wanted to be a mule today. I, excuse me, a, a jackass today. She didn't want to plow. So Molly's like, not today. It's too hot out here. Then other times, he out there, he, y'all, he worked his farm till he was in his 80s. He out there and he can't keep up with Molly because Molly's horse heart wants to please him and she running the field. But when he got that mule, he got Molly out that barn in the morning time, he didn't know what he was going to have to deal with. And that's what's wrong with a lot of us with our visions and our destinies. We have mingled things. We've caused, we, we've allowed tags to be garments and we've allowed garments to act like tags. So we don't know what we got. Be careful who you allow to attach to you. And if it's not woven into the undergarments, don't weave it into your outer garments. If it's not a part of your, your code, your ethics, your beliefs, your convictions, why would you want to put it on? Why, why would you want people attached? I'm not the one to, I'm not going to sit in a room where I don't agree with what's being said or done. And just suck it up. Not if it's my room. I'll leave your room. May not ever say anything to you. But in my room. I got something to say. If it's not in your foundation. If it's not what is close to your heart. And next to your body. Why would you allow it? To prick you. Don't weave it. No matter how much money they got. No matter how much influence they got. No matter how much know-how they got. Don't do it. He talking to somebody tonight. Because I'm on here longer than I'm supposed to be on here. He talking to somebody tonight. Don't do it. Don't accept it. Don't sign the contract. Well, I'm tired. I'm just, I'm just, listen, I'm just talking now. I'm tired. I've been plowing in this field too long. It's time. I don't have any money to do it anymore. You need to check the context, the content. What have you mixed? Check the team. Is someone jealous of you? Now remember, jealousy is they think you can replace them. Jealousy turns into envy. Envy unchecked turns into covetedness. When people covet things, they'll kill for it. So your ministry might be being destroyed because you didn't deal with jealousy in the beginning. There's nothing you can do about jealous people. It's such a strong influence. Most people won't even admit. It's saying something really, really, we see is bad about me. I think you replaced me. That's, that's, that's a mouthful. 
I think you can replace me. I think you do it better than me. I think I'm going to be cast aside for you. That's jealousy. Well, this has been good tonight. Wow. I think we'll go into it again next week. Tags and attachments. Tags and attachments. Anybody got any questions? You can put them up before we go. Mm -hmm. Everybody's valuable, you all. If they love you, if they believe in you, don't cast them away. Everybody has a use. You know butter churns from the bottom up, right? Hi, Julie. There would be no butter on the top if the churning didn't happen at the bottom. Don't cast people aside. And tag-alongs are not bad. See, y'all thought that thing was going to go another way. The tag out there telling everybody to buy you. The tag out there telling everybody what you made out of. It's your fan club. But realize it's a tag. Tags get thrown away, discarded. Don't try to make the tag the garment. The tag just heralds the garment. Amen. All right. Those of you who are just coming on, it's good to see you. We'll be back next Wednesday again at 9 p.m. A little bit after sometimes because I'm coming right in from doing other things. But go back and watch this one. This one right here is going to answer some questions for some people. This one came hot off the press. So go back and watch. <laughs> go back and watch. I love you guys. And again, I'll see you in the Situation Room next Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Love you. Bye-bye.